They may be called the next generation, but they're the church of today. Reach, disciple, and mobilize students to share the hope of the gospel. This is Next Gen On Mission with Shane Pruitt and Paul Wooster. Hey friends, welcome to another episode of the Next Gen On Mission podcast. Thanks for joining us again. My name is Shane Pruitt, the National Next Gen Director for the North American Mission Board. Got my co-host with me, Paul Wooster, the National Collegiate Director. Paul, what's happening, my brother? Hey, how's it going, man? You were just in Oklahoma. I love seeing you there. Just got to see a bunch of students come to Christ. That's where I went to school, University of Oklahoma. So, man, it's so cool to see you just paying it forward, leading all these students to Christ, man. Oh, man, it was awesome, man. Yeah, I was on the uh, campus of the University of Oklahoma last night. You know, uh, I live in Texas, so I was doing international missions. And uh, <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> no, dude, I love the Sooners, man. They were awesome, man. There's some straight up followers of Jesus there, man. They are on fire and they brought a lot of friends to the service, you know, to the worship gathering last night that didn't know Jesus. So we got to lot, see a lot of college students say yes to Jesus, man. Um, that ministry there is doing amazing things. So, man, I loved being there. Loved the Sooners, man. It was fun. Boomer. Boomer, yeah. dude. <laughs> oh, dude, I am so excited about our guest today. Like, I, man, I'm about 110% sure she would like own you in Bible trivia, man. <laughs> <laughs> me or you? <laughs> Just kidding. You, man. Yeah, me too. No. Hey, yeah. But I'm 150% sure she would own Yeah, no, me. no. For sure. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, my uh, my wife listens to her podcast, and she, yeah, all same. the time she she comes to me and she's like, "Did you know blah 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 blah?" And I'm like, "Actually, no." <laughs> I yeah, I know. It's <laughs> like, yes, I knew that you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally playing it off. All right, hey, well, Paul, hey, our ne- our guest today is the great, the one and the only, the real TLC, Terry Lee Cobble. <laughs> Um, and I am so excited as we're going to talk about Generation Z and the Bible. Tara Leah Cobble is the creator and the host of the Bible Recap Podcast and the author of the book by the same name. She founded D Group, an international network of weekly discipleship and Bible study groups, and she hosts a daily radio show, radio show called The God Shot. I've also listened to that. So good. And she lives in the great Dallas, Texas. Tara Lee Cobble, welcome to the Next Gen on Mission podcast. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Oh, we are so excited to have you. Um, and, you know, uh, you live in Texas. I am a native Texan. And so it's always good to have somebody <laughs> on the podcast from the greatest nation in the world, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I'm not a native Texan, but I sure do love being here. Awesome. Well, so, hey, we're so glad you're on. Hey, Terry, before we get too spiritual, uh-huh. tell us one fun fact that we need to know about you that we may not already know. A fun fact about me. Uh, I <laughs> One of my goals in life is to poke molten lava with a stick. <laughs> I want to <laughs> I want to go somewhere that there's an active volcano with an eruption and I want to go just poke lava with a stick and just <laughs> see what that's like. Oh that my sounds, goodness. Yeah, really, I'm really safe. <laughs> I'm going to Iceland next month and there's there's a volcano that's active right now and I'm like, "Get me to the lava." Yes, that is so, so cool. I love that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, um my wife and I we do a lot of ministry in Uganda, Rwanda and um the DRC. Um and uh last year or right before COVID, we were in DRC and uh there's an active volcano there. So it's sobering at night to look towards the mountain and see a red glow. It's no. really wild. Oh, yeah. I hope I get to do that. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> she's got, a, she's got a, a wish for danger here. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> love it. That's cool. I'm down. Yeah. I'm digging that. <laughs> Maybe you just need a really long, like a pole vault pole or something like that. that <laughs> Maybe. You know, that, that could work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably don't want to like the roast the marshmallow pole. You probably don't want <laughs> to operate on that. I don't yeah. know to expect if it'll catch fire or if it will just, you know, disintegrate. I don't know, but I'm excited sounds, about it. If you roast a marshmallow over a volcano, you got to add that to your bio. Well, absolutely <laughs> I will. Absolutely. <laughs> Talk about a profile picture, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So oh we're gosh. talking on this podcast. We we love to ask the question. We ask all of our guests the same question. Um, what do we need to know about Generation Z? What have you noticed about them? I think what I 
love about Gen Z, um, and this is something I did not invent this fact. I did not discover this. I actually heard this from my friends at Alabaster, who um, I don't I don't know if you guys know them or not, but they make beautiful Bibles. Mm -hmm. And um, they we were having a conversation about Gen Z and what's unique about them as far as like Christianity is concerned. Uh, they they're talking about how every generation has something that draws them to the Lord. And so for um, like the, the boomer generation, it was what's true for um, like Gen X and millennials. It's, it's like, what is um, like, how do we see God's love? What is, where do we see God's love show up? And for, um, for Gen Z, it's what is beautiful. Mm, wow. Love that. And so these visual, it's one of the things that inspired them to make these beautiful Bibles that they make. And it's one of the reasons why things like Instagram and all the, like all the visual stuff, um, it's such an avenue. We have such an opportunity with all the beauty that abounds in the world to mm. use that as an avenue to point people to the Lord. And wow. um, so I love that, that that is just this unique thing about them that draws them to the Lord. Wow, that is so cool. And I was even thinking about the Bible itself as a piece of literature, right, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. very beautiful in its, its, and on a lot of face, on its face, sometimes people read parts of it and they're like, well, this genealogy isn't beautiful, like when I just read it. But um, one thing you've done with this Bible recap um, is just help people fall in love with God's word. And so we wanted to ask, tell us a little bit about your story personally, but also how in the world did you start this like global movement <laughs> called Bible Recap of just people listening to the podcast? And what are some ways that God is using it around the world? Well, um, I, I grew up in the church and reciting John 3.16 with my mom is my earliest memory. She was teaching it to me when she was rocking me to sleep at night. So I knew it before I could even verbalize it. So wow. um, I remember saying that with her. And then I remember my second memory is my brother Jason leading me to Christ. Um, and I went into full-time ministry right out of college and um, was traveling the world, singing, speaking, writing books, things like that, but had not read the whole Bible. And it was because even though I'd been in church my whole life and had every opportunity, I mean, guys, my family owns a Christian bookstore. That was my first <laughs> job was selling Bibles, you know, wow. but I had never read it all. And it was for me, and I think this is true for a lot of people, um, I, first of all, didn't understand why the whole thing was important. Like, I don't need to know the Old Testament stuff. Like, that doesn't apply to me anymore, right? Like, I can just stick to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. um, that was sort of my attitude for a while. And then when I did try to read it, I didn't understand why it was important. Did I need to apply it? What does this mean? Why would God leave this in here? Why, why? like, four columns of genealogies? Just mm -hmm. give me a break, you know, like those kinds of things. And so... Um, I, the first time I read it really struggled. And a friend of mine told, he's a pastor who, who suggested when I read it again, look for God, stop looking for me, look for the Love character that. of God. And so that's where I discovered that beauty that drew me to him. The beauty mm. that pulled me in was the beauty of his character that I'd been missing because I'd been looking for myself. I'd been treating the Bible like a mirror, wow. not like a picture of God. And so when I started looking for God, everything started making more sense. The story took shape in a way that it never had before. And I read it chronologically, which isn't front to back. You know, that's, that's, it's not laid out like in chronological order, like a story, it's laid out like a library. And so you flip back and forth to read the chronological mm -hmm. story, but you get the narrative and the narrative is beautiful. And like the old Testament is so rich and textured and layered and lush. And I love it. And mm. Uh, so one of the things that we do with the Bible recap, when it, whenever I started this podcast, I wanted to help people get over the obstacles that had kept me from reading the Bible. And so I wanted to not leave them at the end of each, each day with the app, burdened with something that they were supposed to do, some application point, because again, that is about me. Mm -hmm. And so what I wanted to do was leave them with a picture of God and his beauty. So that's why we end every day yeah. with what we call the God shot. And, and like, here's a picture of God and his character and it is captivating. So that's that how, so that's much. how it started. And, um, just so grateful that the Lord is using it like he is. 
I love that so much. And it does, it does radically change um, how you view the Bible and read the Bible when you're looking at for God to be the hero in every story. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't help but think of, you know, our neighbor, uh, Pastor Matt Chandler, you know, mm-hmm. and I can't help but think of David and Goliath. And I just hear his voice in my head going, you're not David. You're not <laughs> right, David. right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Who knew that sermon would become such a meme, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's so true. Like it we is. try to find ourselves as the hero of every story and we're mm-hmm. not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Well, Terry, what would you say? Um, and I think this is so relevant. You know, there was a time maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago where people say like, even in approaching cultures, like, Hey, you can talk about God. You just can't talk about Jesus because the moment you talk about Jesus, everybody kind of freaks out. And I always say it in my observation and being around college students a lot and young adults, teenagers even, that really it's shifted a little bit to where you can talk about Jesus mm-hmm. uh, because he is kind of acceptable. He's like the hero of whatever our agenda or what we're passionate about. He's right. the hero of that. <laughs> uh-huh. um, but you can't talk about the Bible. So what would you say to like people that go, man, I love Jesus, but I don't agree with the Bible. I don't like the Bible. Like, what's a good response to that? Because we hear that a lot. Yeah. yeah I, and I, I have heard that in conversation too. And I, my sort of question, and it's, it's going to come off abrasive probably no matter how I phrase it, but I try to do it more gingerly in actual conversation. But I don't know how people would know who Jesus is if they right. weren't reading the Bible. Exactly. Yeah. It's some invented version that they have in their heads of like, he's a good teacher. He's a, I mean, if you look at the book of John and how many ways and times Jesus claims to be God and the things that he says to people, you can't say he's a good teacher or a good, like, you know, like you can't say those things about him. If he's claiming to be God, like, like C.S. Lewis said, he's either a lunatic yeah. who yep. thinks he's God and isn't, um, he's a liar who's claiming to be God when he knows he's not, or he's really Lord. And so you have to take Jesus for what we actually know about him and not some invented version. And to do that, you have to read the Bible. You know? <laughs> and um, if God is alive, if Jesus is alive, and he is, um, then his word can't be outdated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's not love dead, that. you know? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I That's love so that. You know, I love that. And I think, yeah, if we're not careful, when we allow our opinions to shape our view of Jesus, if we're not careful, we almost start like just worshiping this idol named Jesus because it's mm-hmm. really a, a, a Jesus formed by our opinions and not the Jesus of the word of God. So I yeah. love that. Yeah. And I'll mm-hmm. tell you, I mean, you know, I, I just mentioned I was in full time ministry for years before I read the Bible. <laughs> yeah. um, I really wrestled when I read through the first time because I saw things about him that I'd never seen wow. and I yeah. didn't like them. <laughs> yeah. And I really had, to, and I just yeah. saw Paul's eyes go wide. Um, I mean, yeah. I'm just being honest. No, I get I, it. Yeah, I get it. I had never, sure. um, I had never uh, encountered these things. And I was confronted as a person who was a believer, was in ministry. I was confronted with the reality of who Jesus is. And I had to go, do I believe this? And do I love him? Mm. And I really wrestled with it on that first time through, because again, I was looking for me. And so when you read scripture with a lens that is me centric, anything that God does that is different than what you think should, he should have done. Um, it makes him a bad God. Mm. And I become the better God who, well, I wouldn't have done that. And that was not how would you, how dare you? And mm. so whenever my, my pastor friend challenged me to look for God and his character, and he would say like, what does this passage reveal about what God loves? What does it reveal about what he hates? What motivates him to do what he does? In the long arc of this story, what do you see his character bearing out? And those things really flipped. You know, I had this high anthropology and low Christology my first trip through. And the wow. second time through when I read, and it flipped my, my anthropology and Christology on its head. And I had this, this developed high view of God and who he is. And, and it really diminished my view of me and man and what we deserve and who we are. And that set everything right in my heart. Mm. But it was, only, you know, my, my trouble with God came through reading scripture, but then my resolution with God came through reading scripture and oh. reading it rightly. Wow. That. that is so good. It's, it reminds me of Romans 12 too, about how we're transforming our mind by renewing our mind through mm-hmm. God's word. And the more you're in God's word, it's like kind of washing out all of our, all of our own opinions you know, so many of my opinions 
uh, it doesn't really w matter what I think about certain things. It matters what God says and, <laughs> and his yes. character Trump trumps all of that. So with that in mind, um, what, when we're teaching this generation, God's word, we have a lot of youth pastors. We have a lot of college pastors and other, other leaders that teach this generation, God's word mm -hmm. on a regular basis. What would you say, uh, or just some advice, some tips, what have you found to be effective when, uh, when teaching God's word to this generation? Uh, first of all, I just would first I would say thank you for what you're doing. For just, you know, I would say thank you to those teachers. The fact that they are um, walking in that calling, but then I would also, you know, my my counsel would be: you are talking to a generation that is saturated with a cult. You know, they're in a culture and and steeped in this culture that is saturated with me centricity. It's just a me centric culture, and the the battle that you have is the battle that I just explained of, of trying to take me out of this. It's God is not here to get behind my agenda. God is not here to advance my plan. Um, and it's going to be very countercultural. Um, and so that I think is that I think is one of the big battles is, you know, if you look at Instagram and you look at, you see the books that people are buying these days and it's all yeah. about, you know, the hustle and the, you go after this and you do this and, and, just the way we even take scripture out of context to make it mean what we want it to mean, to make it look like God owes us all our dreams. That's mm. a real battle that you have on your hands. But the only way you fight that with truth is to fight it with scripture. Mm. That's so good. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, thinking about how this generation views the Bible, um, oh, even thinking about the, the inerrancy of scriptures, like how we can trust scripture, um, how do we instill that in people that we're, we're teaching and training and working with um, just that, that, that respect for the authority of God's word? I, you know, I'm, I'm sim somewhat biased in what I, how I think this should be done, but um, just I've seen it work so well is teaching scripture exegetically, teaching through the word, helping people see verse by verse, line by line, what the word is actually saying. Um, I do think topical sermons and things like that, are, are, they're important and they do serve a purpose, mm -hmm. but really helping people get in the word, understand the story, understand the context, because without, um, without that, it does just become this self-help book. It does just become um, something that, and, and those are things that are easy to disagree with. Because if you, if you see like there's some, something that you perceive as counsel in scripture and you take it and you try it and it doesn't work for you, then, oh, the Bible's not true. It didn't hold up to what it said. Mm -hmm. But when you zoom out and you see like, oh, that actually wasn't a promise. That was wisdom for life. You know, like right. when you see how it all fits mm -hmm. in and it's like, oh, I have to read it for what it is. Mm -hmm. So um, I think, on a larger scale, zooming out um, to see the whole context of scripture. So I, th I really think teaching the whole counsel of the word is vital. Yeah, I love that, Terry. Man, I'm vibing with that for sure. And, and that's my conviction too, is the, the verse by verse through books of the Bible, because you eventually hit every topic. You eventually hit everything the Bible deals with. Yeah. I know like in our nature, if we're kind of doing, and I don't want to, say anything negative about topical series, but in our nature, we tend to avoid the hard subjects and the hard mm -hmm. topics when we do that, you know? Um, and maybe that's just me. I would tend to avoid those. And so verse by verse makes you deal with every single thing. And uh, yeah. I once had a pastor tell me too, on the practical side, it's so helpful too. If you're going verse by verse and you're having to preach on something that's very difficult and very relevant to your context, um, then people are going, oh, well, he's just going through the next verses in the Bible. Um, before, man, I remember growing up and the preacher would get like on a soapbox about something and you're like, man, I wonder who he's preaching to. Like, I wonder what happened, you know, like, you know and so when you're preaching verse by verse, you're just going through the verses. You're not like, oh, I wonder who he's mad at. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Uh, so Terry, Lee, um, you know, uh, I'm going to throw you a softball here for you to just, uh, cause I, know, I, I feel like I know where you're going to go with it. Um, so I, you know, I think one that, the negative knocks, um, sometimes maybe fairly, but most of the time, probably unfairly, a lot of like next gen ministries, like collegiate ministries, young adult ministries, student ministries, um, tend to be more, uh, event driven, more entertainment driven, more fellowship driven. 
Uh, Mm -hmm. What would you say about that and the need to go more to like word centric, more word driven? So I, uh, I lead a ministry called D group and the the Bible recap was born out of D group and we have existed for 12 years and it just started with me and a bunch of college girls. And Mm -hmm. now it is uh, hundreds of groups. We've been on six continents in a couple of languages, men's groups, women's groups, you name it. And, um, one of the things that is our core, our core values are number one, scripture as roots and number two, community as fruit. We believe community okay. happens best. <clears throat> excuse me. We believe community happens best as a byproduct of being on mission together. Yeah. Because if you have okay. community as the goal, you're going to leave the minute somebody hurts your feelings. The minute the cool person that you like moves away, the yeah. minute um, you're confronted with something that is difficult or anything like somebody calls you out on your sin, anything like that, you're going to peace out if community is the goal. Wow. If you look at the ways that people who are very unlike each other bond, it's when they share a mission. So mm-hmm. you, you find guys who are in the army who've been deployed together that are from very different socioeconomic backgrounds, different racial, different cultures, different all that. When they go and they're deployed together, they are bonded for life because they yep. share a mission. And we have the greatest mission in the history Amen. of the world. And it's unstoppable. And so when we are on mission together to advance the kingdom of God and to know him and to be in his word, to be in relationship with him, to advance his kingdom, we will build community as a result. Mm -hmm. But if that's the goal, you're going to be, you're going to find fractures at every turn. Mm, That's strong. That's really strong. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm going to so use cool. that. <laughs> Charlie, I'm going to give you credit like the first five times, but then after that, it becomes like, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's how we do it. Totally kidding. That is strong. I'm going to use that a ton. That is super yeah. helpful. Yeah, that's a great. I mean, getting into God's word is a thing that makes your yeah. community better. Mm-hmm. And then also like, but a lot of people are having, str- I'm, are struggling to get into God's word at like their quiet times, their daily discipline, Um, you know, teenagers, college students, young adults, but even if we're honest, a lot of us that are in vocational ministry even struggle to get that habit because we're always writing sermons about the Bible, Yeah, but we're not, we're not really getting into God's word. So what advice would you give to someone that maybe they're struggling to get started or to get, maybe they're, they've gotten started, but they, they've fallen off that they just need to get more traction in their personal daily discipline of getting into God's word. Well, first of all, I can really relate to all of that. I can relate to the um, the practical aspects of it. And I can also relate to the emotional and spiritual aspects of it. Because for a long time, I didn't want to read the Bible. But I wanted to want to read the Bible. Mm-hmm. So I needed to get from the want to want to to the want to. And, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I had to ask the Lord to help me. I'm like, I can't change my heart. But you can. You built it. You can change it. So I need you to carve out time in my schedule for you. I need you to draw me into your word when I'm resistant. And I need you, this was this is a very me thing. I need to learn something about you today. I need to see something new about you. I need you to correct any lies I've believed about you. Teach me something new that I've never seen before. Help something jump off the page at me about who you are. Because I am so engaged when I'm mentally stimulated. Yeah. And I want to yeah. learn something new. And so um, those were prayers that I had to pray to ask the Lord to I I needed help. I can't do it on my own, you know? And so I needed the spirit to be at work in me to make the word uh, come alive. Um, I'm I'm doing a John Stott Bible study right now with D group. And one of the things that um, he says in the book is that um, the word without the spirit is powerless and the spirit without the word is weaponless. Mm. And so, you know, those two together are so important. And so on the practical side where I really struggled was, I mean, my pastor friend, I've referenced him a lot, um, but he, he is the one who challenged me to read through the Bible the first time. And he said, you can read the whole thing in 12 minutes a day in a year, 12 minutes a day. And I was like, Mm. I have that. I I would be lying to myself if I said like that's commercial breaks on your favorite show, you know, that's your commute. And I'm an auditory learner. And so for me, like having, having all of the technology that we have today where I can, the Bible can be read to me for free. Like anybody who's listening to this podcast, you do audio, 
And so yep. if you do audio, guess what? The Bible.com will read it to you. The Bible app will read it to you. You can even choose the accent you want it read in. Like we are the most scripture saturated society in the history of the world. And yet we're scripture starved because Whoa. we don't think we have 12 minutes a day. And so 12 minutes a day in a year, you can do it. And so there were days when I would wake up and I would look at my Bible across the room and I would think, I don't want to read it, but I want to want to read it. I'm asking the Lord to help me. And the only way my heart is going to change is if I engage with the word. And so I just would do it on the days when I didn't want to read it. And if all I learned that day was discipline, that's still something I needed to learn. Hmm. Oh my goodness. So good. I love that. You have to move from want to want to read it to want to read it. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That is so good. <laughs> Charlie, we always close the Next Gen on Mission podcast with the same on mission charge. The heart behind this podcast is to see the next generation realize they are really the now generation, not just the future of the church, but they are the church right now. They have the mission of God on their life now, the calling of God on their life now, the Great Commission now. Would you give us one closing thought on that and one practical next step for that? Oh, I love that. It makes me so excited. Yeah. This is, this is, man, you guys are going to set the world on fire in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I would say is, and a lot of people, I didn't know this for a long time, and I'm sure scholars would debate this, but Jesus disciples, his apostles, that 12, the crew of 12, they were likely in the range of 13 to 15. Mm -hmm. wow. They were not 45 year old men with beards and wrinkled foreheads. Um, much my apologies to the Renaissance painters who gave us that idea, yeah, but right. they were likely, which makes when you read scripture and you see Peter's like emotional hormonal outburst, they make so much more sense in <laughs> yeah. light of him being a teenager, you know, right? Yeah, He's yeah, like, I'm going to yeah. cut that guy's ears off. I want to walk on water, you know? Yeah. Um, or one of them bragging about winning a race. You know <laughs> exactly. <what> I mean? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. John. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so <laughs> uh, they are you, they are, they are you, you are, in that position and they changed the world mm -hmm. changed the world by carrying the message of the gospel and so that is that makes me super excited um and then the practical step i would say is and this is going to sound like a lot read your bible and don't treat it as a checklist item it's not a i want to read through the whole bible and check that off my bucket list i'm here to say i want you to read your bible every day for the rest of your life mm -hmm. every day for the rest of your life it is yes. not a to-do list item. It is air to breathe. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much. That is, that is excellent. So our, our listeners, I'm sure are going to want to follow you on social media and connect with you. So do you have, what, what social media are you on and do you have a website you can point people to? Yeah. So people well, connect? I'd love to invite them to join us with the Bible recap. It is the Bible recap.com. If you go to the start page, it'll tell you everything you need to know because we have, you know, the podcast or you can do the book or you can do the new Testament plan or you can do the whole Bible, just lots of options. And it's all explained at the Bible recap.com on the start link. And you know, we're the Bible recap on Instagram and I'm um, Tara Lee Cobble on Instagram and would love to uh, to make friends with all your friends, guys. Yeah. Seems like awesome. you hang out with a really great crew. They are. They are. <laughs> we, hey, the Next Gen Mission Podcast crew and those that engage with us, they are awesome. We're so thankful for all the Next Gen leaders. And, and Terry Lee, we're so thankful for you. You are the real TLC, and you <laughs> dropped some major truth. Like my phone is full of notes and, uh, and listen, friends, I know you listening, you're probably going to be like me. I am going to be quoting Tara Lee Cobble for a very, very long time. So Tara Lee, thank you so much for being on Solid yeah. Gold. Thank you so much for your time. And friends, Loved it. thank you for listening to the Next Gen Mission podcast. If you have any questions on reaching the next generation, please email us at evangelism at nam.net. We'll try to address those on a future podcast. And listen, friends, thanks for engaging with us. Have a great rest of your day and tell somebody about Jesus and read your Bible. Yeah. <laughs>